Welcome to a new video. This time we will make a metal dust collector. Instead of using water for a spark trap, this dust collector will be made from sheet metal and use a thin baffle to separate the metal dust. The ingredients are fairly straightforward. I'm using a blower with a steel impeller, see a link in the description, 16 gauge sheet metal and 1 inch angle iron. In part 1, Tony and I will build the thin baffle from the aforementioned sheet metal. Unlike a cyclone separator, the thin baffle is much shorter and includes a bottom baffle that allows the dust to drop out but prevents it from getting sucked back in. You will see how it looks like at the end of this video. In the meantime, the shop is not equipped with any sheet metal tools and I just gave Tony a drill that was set on hammer mode that does not help. However, while we don't have any real sheet metal tools, we make the best use of all the tools we have at hand. For the thin baffle, we need to create two 24 inch diameter circles from the 16 gauge sheet metal. We are using a hole in the middle of the sheet metal to insert a guide pin. Using the bandsaw, we almost cut a complete circle using a jig we cobbled together for the bandsaw, but stop short of cutting the complete circle to leave a raceway for the inlet. As neither Tony nor I have much experience working with sheet metal at all, we are proceeding very cautiously. Fortunately the bandsaw cuts quite nicely and is also making it easy to maintain the circle. Since 16 gauge sheet metal is fairly thick, I am somewhat worried about bending the walls that will support the top and bottom circle that we are currently cutting out. While working on this project I had looked into buying sheet metal tools, but the smaller sheet metal brakes and rollers are not rated for 16 gauge sheet metal. The tools that are, are much larger, heavier and more expensive. Alright, here we are. One circle is cut out and where we stopped cutting is where the air inlet to the dust collector will be located. Tony is marking that part out now. The size of the inlet will be 6 inch square, which is the same dimension as the height of the baffle and big enough to not significantly reduce airflow. For the baffle to work, the compartment into which the dust will drop needs to be airtight. Otherwise, airflow would move through the dropout in the baffle and prevent the operation. You will see how that looks like when I test it at the end. I had good luck with the theme baffle for wood dust collection, but getting an airtight sheet metal compartment is a project I have no experience with. Now we are completing the bottom part of the baffle. At this point the sheet metal for the top and bottom parts are still completely identical, however they will deviate soon after. The top part of the baffle will receive a 6 inch diameter circle in the middle where the blower will be positioned and the bottom part of the baffle still needs more material removed to create the dropout. Before we do that, we need to cut a 6 inch wide strip of sheet metal that will form the outer wall of the baffle. Since we don't have a shear, we mounted a guide on the bandsaw table. Let's talk about the 6 inch hole in the middle of the sheet metal. Initially, we thought we would use a circular hole cutter attached to a drill. Unfortunately, my drill press does not have enough clearance and stabilizing the drill by hand seemed impossible. Instead, we are cutting four one half inch holes and will use a sheet metal snip to create enough space for a nibbler. How convoluted. Another option could have been using a plasma cutter. 
but they no longer have access to one and have not seen the need to buy one yet. However, I'm pretty sure a plasma cutter will be a likely future acquisition. If you have any other ideas for cutting this darn circle, please let me know in the comments. I really don't have experience working with sheet metal. Fortunately, the snips work quite well, and I should soon have access to insert the nibbler, which will nibble away at the sheet metal. This is a good point in case for how proper tools can make everything move much faster. While the nippler works exceedingly well, getting the right turning radius took some practice. As a result, I'm approaching the circle with multiple overlapping operations. And there we are, almost a perfect circle. Well, a bunch of cleanup was still required. Draw filing is pretty quick to remove the sharp and jagged edges left by the bandsaw. All this preparation is really just procrastination to avoid bending the strip of 6 inch wide sheet metal into a circle. As it turns out, there is a reason that sheet metal rollers exist. Without them, rolling thick sheet metal is somewhat difficult. With this brilliant realization in mind, I proceeded to make myself a Frankenstein pyramid roller. It consists of three rolls where one sits on top and can be moved down to increase the bending amount. Ideally, I would have used a lathe and solid rolls, but that was not an option in this case. Instead, I welded something together from black plumbing pipe. Yuck. Nonetheless, it seems to get the job done and my vice grips constitute an almost perfect crank. What more could I want? I occasionally check how close I have come to the right radius, but in the end manage to slightly overbend the sheet metal anyway. It turned out that that was not really a problem, and the jig I built for clamping took care of removing gaps in the joint. Usually when welding, the clamping setup is the interesting part that makes for a successful weld. Here you see a circle cut from plywood that I'm using as part of my clamping setup. The cut corners from the plywood circle are placed on the outside and allow me to press the sheet metal tightly together. Welding sheet metal is another challenge for me. I'm using a stitching approach to prevent the metal from getting too hot and from blowing through the walls with a welder. By and large, that seems to be going well, although the weld beads are somewhat ugly and need to be cleaned up later. I am slowly working my way around the circumference of the circle and reposition my plywood clamping jig as needed to get access.
Inspecting the inside shows good penetration on the welds. What I forgot to mention was that the strip of sheet metal I had cut was only 3 feet long and not enough to make it all the way around. That's okay, I will just cut another piece and continue along. To match the remainder of the circle to the inlet, I will first weld in another wall. Since I don't have a break, that will make joining the bent wall to the inlet much easier. Again, the main challenge here is how to clamp the piece in place. For that, I use some cut-off square tube that allows me to get everything lined up. To bend the wall to the right radius, my cobbled together Frankenstein roller will have to do the job. I'm still surprised how well it is working. The main challenge in making it was to have the rollers well centered, which I struggled to do without a lathe. When bending metal, it's never possible to bend the whole piece evenly, and so the extra length to give the roller something to grab needs to be cut off. After placing the sheet metal into my little plywood jig, welding everything together is quite fast. There we go. The walls are completed and the only thing missing from the thin buffle is the bottom with the dropout where the metal dust can fall into the collection bin. The cutout is a 240 degree arc that stops at the inlet. Since I want to use my circle cutting jig on the bandsaw again, I need to figure out where the cuts need to be placed and where I need to make space for the bandsaw blade. Creating the opening for the blade requires many small cuts due to the limited turning radius of the blade I have installed. Once the opening is there, cutting the remainder of the circle is fortunately quite easy. At the moment I'm keeping a small tab to help with welding the bottom to the rest of the baffle, and I don't know yet if I'll remove it eventually or not. Once I welded the bottom in a couple of places, I can go back to my little plywood pieces to create a gap-free joint for the rest of the wall. As I have some rigidity in the whole structure now, I only need to insert one of the plywood segments. Previously trying to clamp both of them with my parallel jaws clamp resulted in either one or the other frequently falling down before I could put on clamp pressure. Alright, the welding is done and only some cleanup on the welds is remaining. 
Now comes the moment where I can see if the blower fits on my sheet metal theme baffle and give it a quick test run. There is still a lot more work to be done, but this is a good moment to finish this episode by checking if the battle dust gets blown out or remains in the baffle. Remember, the dropout is not in an airtight compartment, so I don't actually expect the dust to disappear. Another video I'm working on, and which I'm very excited about, is to visualize the pattern welding process in sorts. I liked my visuals so much that I made myself a few t-shirts. If you like the design and would enjoy a t-shirt as well, follow the links in the description. As always, many thanks to those of you who follow me on Patreon and continue to show their patience with my slow video production. See you next time.